Hey, everybody. We're joined once again by Eric for another uh, movie deck, Deck Tech. This week, we're looking at Gondor Men. So this is part of an ongoing series we're doing to sort of look at the movie block decks and, and sort of what is the, the meta there and what kind of decks. Once again, the video, uh, the, I'm sorry, the deck video list will be in the de video description. So if you guys want to look at that stuff, it'll all be in the video description. So I'm going to hand it over to Eric here and we can get started. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate having me again. Uh, always a fun time. So today I've got prepared for you guys four decks that are all based off of the Gondor affiliation. Um, so we'll go, just go four in a row. They're all just the free people's sides again. Um, over here we have Elves and Men, followed by a um, Gondor Bomb deck, followed by a Noble Leaders variant, and then finally over on the right we have Knights. So I'll go through kind of the main uh, point of each of those versions of the Gondor men archetypes. And we'll just go uh, go through one by one. So I'm going to start with the elves and men deck. And I'll try to get the cards legible through the camera here. Some of these are foils again. Those but, look um, great. They look great. <laughs> so the uh, this first deck is your traditional elves and men. So um, this is basically going to be loading up Gondor men companions with effects and then um, having your elves buff them and support them. So it's kind of the mains and toys um, of this format. So you just got the standard Frodo here with the one ring, um, excuse me, the ruling ring variant. And then for your starting fellowship, you have the standard elf start, which is um, Legolas and Glorfindel. But then um, this is where the um, men part comes in is you do have you, as your most key companion, Aragorn, Ranger of the North. So you do have a full play set of those. And um, basically, this is just going to be a solid companion, especially so when you load him up with um, the next part here, which I'm going to show you, which is, you know, you've got a couple, couple copies of Anduril, Flame of the West. Um, that just uh, makes Aragorn very beastly. And then, um, importantly, the theme of this deck, the last alliance of elves and men, which does give the um, man you play this on, the Gondor man you play this on, plus one strength, up to three for each elf you can spot. So the goal here basically is, and obviously you're playing multiples of all these, is to set up Aragorn with Anduril and the last alliance. And so then you have a 13 power companion who's damage plus one, who has five vitality. So it's just a, you know, huge beastly uh, companion. So that's the, your main uh, main focus. Then in terms of the supporting cast, usually the second target you're going to look for for the last alliance is Faramir, son of Denethor. And um, he's really good because he can blank your opponent from using skirmish abilities, but then he himself can, you know, be a 10 power with uh, last alliance. Then you've got Boromir as another Gondor man, help pump your hobbits. And uh, you've got Darufin just to get rid of possessions. Um, Noble Leaders is kind of a cool card because you do have Aragorn, Boromir, and Faramir. So that can come in with three tokens. And then Armor just to reduce damage. And a couple more Gondor support cards in Citadel of the Stars and Stone Tower. Then kind of on to the Elf segment of this, you've got Elrond, Herald to, Herald to Gil-Galad. And he's obviously in there for the healing aspect. You're really good on Legolas, but potentially on your Aragorn as well as necessary. And then um, Arwen, Fair Elf Maiden, just as another backup elf. And then in terms of those support cards for Legolas, we do have um, Eyegloss and Tale of Gilgalad. And support cards for Elrond, we've got Secret Sentinels and Vilya and just Shadow Between for more healing and cycling. And of course, Sam, Son of Hamfest to remove burdens. And then you've got a few Hobbit support cards in Sting, Tale of the Great Ring, and there and back again. So kind of looks maybe a little random when you look at it, but this is a very stock deck list, very standard. And you know it's really just all the best cards among Gondor men, elves, and hobbits all put together in a nice uh, nice synergistic kind of mains and toys package there. Very cool. And once again, the foils just look spectacular. It's great seeing these. I think 
that's a secondary sort of externality of this, right? It's just being able to see some of these foils. <laughs> so it's very cool. So then uh, the next deck that I want to show you is the um, what I call the Gondor bomb. And when I say bomb, basically the point of this deck is going to be to just flood the table with companions all on one single site. And I'll kind of this one has a little more um, setup required in terms of how you play it. So maybe I'll give you a little little more on the deck tech here. So we're using Isildur bearer of heirlooms as our alternate ring bearer. And he's bearing um, one ring answer to all riddles. So that's your ring bearer start. And then for your starting fellowship, you are going to use Gandalf, leader of men. And then this one doesn't really matter so much, but I've got Ranger of Athelion in here because the point of this is we're going to actually um, see next is we're going to um, burn this guy and I'll um, give you a little more detail on that. So this Gandalf is the one that is minus two in your starting fellowship. So it's really nice that you can start him as a companion. So basically the, the point of the deck is going to be this saved from the fire. And so anyone, any of you who don't know what save from the fire is, is you can um, basically place a companion in the dead pile, you know, in this case, Ranger of Athelion. And um, then you get three cards of that companion's culture from your deck. So that's going to just um, get you, you know, three big Gondor cards. And um, so you're really looking to try to find one of these save from the fires so that you can burn that Athelion Ranger. And I'll kind of show you what you're going to be looking to set up, too, because it's it's pretty crazy. You're looking to basically set that up, double, double move yourself into Site 3, and then Site 3 is where you drop the bomb. And here's why, is um, you're going to have Denethor, Lord of Minas Tirith, is going to be the first card you look for um, with that search ability. And he's going to have an ability that says if he's at a sanctuary, you can exert him to take a Gondor card into hand from your draw deck. So basically that will let you get two more Gondor cards. So you get basically um, three off Saved by the Fire, two off of Denethor. Um, but then it's gonna get even more um, so than that. And let me just kind of go ahead and show you the rest of this part. So one of the cards you're gonna get is Eligar Aragorn, Elisar Telkantar, um, who also has the ability that when he comes into play, you heal another companion. That will basically allow you to get another exertion out of Denethor to get another Gondor card. And then another card you're going to have in here is Hard Choice, which says spot Aragorn to heal a companion who has the Aragorn signet twice. And if you look closely again at Denethor, Aragorn signet there. So that will heal him twice and give you two more exertions. Um, so I think the math on this is, is that you end up with eight cards after you do all of this, you basically end up with, um, eight Gondor men cards. So you've got, we've looked at our first three, which is Aragorn, Denethor, hard choice. And then the additional cards you're going to get, and this is awesome because you can just play one copy of each of these. You'll get Ellen Dill, the tall, just a huge beastly companion. You're going to get Narsil for him to use. You're going to get... Anduril for Aragorn to use. You're going to get Faramir. And so that, um, that I believe is what you're guaranteed. You might be guaranteed one more. You've got the code of mail that just makes sure your ring bearer can't be overwhelmed unless his strength is tripled. Nice tech there. And then the rest of, if you draw any Gondor men cards, which you are going to, you just use all of your extra pulls to just pull all of these random artifacts because all your artifacts are going to pump up um Elendil with Narsil because this is strength plus one for each artifact so the rest of your Gondor cards are all just going to be artifacts you're going to have the scroll of Isildur the seeing stone of Orthanc and the sapling of the white tree which prevents a wound to any Gondor companion so you can have it basically where almost all of your free people's cards are pulled out of this deck completely at site three and so your, your opponent is just going to have a massive amount of twilight and a massive hand, and they're going to end up playing all the minions that they have, but they're going to have so many cards in their hand that even after they play all the minions, they're probably going to still have a full hand and then there'll be nothing for them to reconcile. So it's a really kind of cheesy different deck here where it's not kind of playing by the standard rules of the game. Um, the rest of your stuff, just to fill it out, of course, Sam for burden removal, 
You've got some Gandalf support cards, which will increase his vitality. And then this is some nice tech is you do get rid of all of the conditions that your opponent plays with deep in thought because you're, you're going to have four Twilight tokens. There's no way you're not after you play the entire deck of big companions. And then um, Terrible and Evil is just to protect your key companions. And this is huge tech then too. After they play all their minions, you can just discard them all in the regroup phase. This says if the fellowship moves in the regroup phase, exert your wizard to discard each minion. So like I said, they will have just played just a massive swarm of minions on you, but you're just going to take them all away. And then oftentimes you can go for a triple, uh, triple move because you do get um, off of Elendil when you play an artifact on him you make the move limit plus one. So when you play um, Narsil on him, you're going to get a ability to triple. So so this is, like I said, a crazy deck. The long and short of it is, I know that was a lot of detailed tech, but you drop your whole hand, your, your whole deck basically on site three, and then you triple into six. You know, that's basically the uh, what you're going for here. So you've got multiple copies of Out of High Airs for future use too. And then these are just some pumps in Sharpen Your Swords. And then you've got couple more support cards there for for the gandalf affiliation so so that's kind of the purpose of that deck like i said that one is way more involved than your typical movie block deck your typical movie block deck is just going to be kind of you play you play your hand as you may but that one has a lot of detailed sequencing as you could see so so i guess the weakness of that deck real quick is just if the sequencing isn't off it can kind of get me messy if you don't draw the right cards you can kind of get yourself into trouble for sure, you need to largely you need to draw a save by the save from the fire, and if you don't draw a save from the fire, your deck can really um, fizzle out. And so, um, largely, you're going to want to play that match it with a minion side that does some really nice cycling. Um, so, one I like to do it with is like the um, Moria, who has the condition where you can just discard three cards, you know, and basically get pitching your hand so you can can refill is, is pretty essential here. Um, Got that. it. Cool. Let's see variation three here. So variation three, I'll give you is it'll be a kind of a shorter version. This version is 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 pretty cool. That um, this one is very uncommon to see. It's not nearly as widely uh, seen as as the traditional elves and men. This is basically a noble leaders variant of elves and men. And why I say it's a noble leaders variant is as a really unique start. You're actually using Boromir as your ring bearer, which is very rare in this format. I don't think I know of any other deck that does that. Um, and Mainly, you're doing it so that you can can play Boromir, um, and then you also are starting Faramir, Captain of Gondor, who has the effect that he makes um, other Gondor men, and you're starting Fellowship minus one, which lets you play that same Denethor that we were just talking about in the last deck. So this deck's pretty cool in that um, you're starting Fellowship, you actually get three of the noble leaders. You get you know basically. Denethor, you know, and the two sons, you get to start all three of those guys. And then you also get to start Galadriel because why not? <laughs> so, um, so that's your starting fellowship. So again, you just have a very um, beastly starting fellowship and you've got three of the noble leaders. And then Denethor in this deck, you're not going to abuse quite so badly as you did in the last deck, but you are going to use him, you know, to pull Aragorn, for example, so you can get Aragorn as the, you know, as the fourth noble leader. So you've got a couple copies of Aragorn, same one, LSR Telkantar. Um, the healing's nice and just it's a bigger Aragorn. And then it's the similar idea here with the sword for Aragorn, Elendil and the sword for him. And then this, ironically, because you can't start Legolas Greenleaf, we're actually just playing three Legolas Greenleafs in the main deck um, as a splash companion. And similar now to, you know, you'll see this is kind of a cross really between the first two decks. It's, it's a cross between the Elves and Men and the Gondor Bomb. So it's kind of a cool hybrid of that. And then because you're really looking to abuse Noble Leaders here, you actually have two copies of that in here. Um, and like I said, in this deck, you can actually spot all four of these guys because you start three of them and you're pretty much always going to have Aragorn too. So every one time you play this, you get the, you get the four tokens off of it, which is pretty cool. And then just got like one last alliance in there. So it's kind of like a light version of that first deck we saw. Um, some of the similar cards. I won't go through all of those again. And then you've got your Elven event package just for, for Galadriel in here, if, if you might remember. Um, if you're familiar with Elves, 
Galadriel can just discard any event to discard a shadow condition or possession. So you've got a lot of um, kind of extraneous events in there to do that, like what you saw, like what we had when we talked about elves in our first video. So Curse the Foul Feet, Stand Against Darkness, Secret Sentinels, kind of the, the usual suspects there. And then again, some of the same Gondor artifacts that we looked at in the previous deck. So like I said, this, this very much so is a cross between the first two decks that we just saw. Very cool. I, I mean, I, it seems interesting that Gondor pairs well with solely like elves and, and you know, like there's not dwarves or, you know, it's just like it's elves and, and Gondor seems to pair well together. Yeah, that, that that's for sure. And like we saw the one with Gandalf, but that was a pretty special corner scenario too, where I think you'll see Gandalf splash in a lot of cultures, but, but yeah, the elves and men really do pair well together. All right, last one here. So the last one I'll give you, this one is going to be more cards that people are probably not as familiar with. This is the Knights. And so the goal here is this deck is really high on the synergy, where the individual cards are not particularly as individually powerful as what we were just seeing in the last decks, but they really come together synergistically. So um, the Ring Bearer, again, is, is Ildor, Bearer of Heirlooms. And this is going to actually be key here where, you know, having each knight be strength plus one, because this is actually a knight's deck. So that text is actually going to be relevant. Um, and so you're just going to start a couple knights um, that are good with um, fortifications is kind of the theme of this too. So you've got um, both of these guys have abilities regarding fortifications. So you've got Alcaran and Turgon. And then the rest of the companions, again, are also going to be um, knight based. So you've got this cool Faramir that um, this is just a fun one to play. There's not any other effect in the game that I'm aware of that's like this. Um, when you play him, you get to look at the top 10 cards of your deck and play a knight from those revealed. So it's kind of like search your deck for a knight, but you don't get to search the whole deck. You just get to search the top 10 cards, kind of arbitrary. But that really is just nice because it lets you get um, additional knights down. So you got that Faramir. And then you've got the Aragorn, who's a knight, is Aragorn, captain of Gondor. Again, not the strongest Aragorn, but he's a knight. So that really synergizes with this. Um, and then the other thing why this is really good is he's got this ability, add two to heal a Gondor companion. So you'll see basically how these fortifications work is you keep exerting yourself, um, or exerting your knights, excuse me, to use the abilities on fortifications. And that's really the theme of the deck. So again, you've got another knight in Imrahal, and he's got the same thing about exerting minions. Garrison of Gondor, again, another knight, has synergy with fortifications. So again, you'll just see knights and fortifications, knights and fortifications is your theme here. And then you've got Ingold. And lastly, there's Sam, because Sam's always there. <laughs> so that's your companions. And then in terms of this deck's going to be just massively heavy on conditions. So if you're running into a player that's playing like, I don't know, Saruman's Power or something crazy like that, that discards all your conditions, you're going to be in for a rough, a rough battle because your point of this deck is to just stack up your uh, support area with conditions. So you've got Garrison of Osgiliath. And then the fortifications are all these different levels of Minas Tirith. So you've got the fifth level. You've got a couple of those. You've got the fourth level. And again, basically how these things work is that you exert or spot to transfer them onto a minion. And like this one, for example, says exhaust that minion. So this, like if you can spot three knights, you just get to, you don't even have to exert. You can just put it on a minion and exhaust them. So that's pretty powerful. So like that one, we got a full play set up. Again, these ones people are familiar with, Citadel of the Stars and Stone Tower. People are pretty familiar with those because you see those in Splashed in other decks. And then um, this one's cool is this is this one lets you reuse your other fortifications. It's a condition that just says exert a man to play a fortification from your discard pile. So you can get get your fortifications back with that. And then um, you've got the Men of Numenor here, just to, again, a couple more Wound Dominion event type cards. And then this is where you get your healing too, where it says each time Bearer wins a skirmish, heal another Gondor companion. 
So we've got the full play set of those. So that's a possession that your guys wear. And then when they win a skirmish, you keep healing. So you keep healing, keep exerting. It's a, you know, very, like I said, very synergistic deck. And then you've got a couple more possessions in Gondor Bow and Knight's Mount. Very cool, man. So, I, I mean, I want to go build some of these myself. <laughs> so uh, everybody that's interested, like, you know, think of pairing this with your favorite sort of shadow type deck. Um, I think we got a lot of cool options here. The, the list of all these cards will be in the video description. So folks that want to build it themselves, you know, we want to have that be a possibility here. Um, Eric, any kind of final thoughts? No, I, I think, the, you know, like you said, Matt, we'll put the deck list in below. And kind of the idea we're going for here is that we're just giving you the shadow side. And basically, you can take the shadow side here and pair it with your favorite uh, minion side and just, you know, go to town and play the deck. Um, like I said, you know, for movie block, the cards are usually still for affordable. No reason you need to have these actually in foil. That's yep. going to break the bank in certain places. But um, yeah, just definitely test it out and um, find the deck that you like. But that, that's kind of the idea here is to show everyone the, the different ways you can play a similar culture so you can kind of um, build the one that, that suits you best and suits your play style best. Yep. And this was the free people side, not shadow side. <laughs> just, Did I say shadow? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all good. Um, <laughs> free yeah, people. I mean, Pair with shadow. Bring your own shadow. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, B B Y O S or something. Um, so thanks, Eric, for this. And we're going to be have more of these with different cultures. I think next up maybe Nazgul. But uh, that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And we'll see you next time.